Good afternoon, family and friends. Welcome back to Ingrid's Kitchen Garden, and I'm Ingrid, and in today's video, I want to tell you the must-haves to grow in your 2023 garden. Well, as in my must-haves. So, first of all, we're going to start out with the tomatoes. Uh, pink, they're not going to go in any order of importance, other than that they're all important to me. So, the first one is going to be the pink boar. And I'm going to put a picture of that tomato probably right up in this area. It is a saladet type of tomato, so it's a little bit bigger than a cherry tomato. You can still eat it in maybe two bites. It has really, really good sweet flavor, and it's one of my must-haves. And the second one is a Kellogg's Breakfast, which is a yellow type of beefsteak tomato. It also is really sweet, uh, great for a sandwich or just plain eating. Uh, one of my top, top ones that I'm excited to grow this year. And my all-time favorite is the Paul Robeson. And it is also a beefsteak tomato. They, these, all these are open pollinated heirloom tomatoes that I'm uh, talking about today. And the Paul Robeson is my top favorite tomato. It has a smoky flavor. It's great for salsas, uh, fresh eating, tomato sauce, all the above. It's just a really good tomato. Um, the next on my list is uh, Biet Alpha Cucumber. It is a thin skin cucumber. It's a, a dual purpose. You can Pick them while they're small and pickle them or ferment them and then let them grow a little bit larger. And the skins are still really, really thin. So they're great for um, salads and fresh eating. And another great vegetable is a hookerai turnip or otherwise known as a snowball radish. It is a small turnip, a large radish in size, and it's pure white, and it is so sweet. Sometimes they call it a, um, a, a apple radish or apple turnip or something, but the name that you want to look for to buy the seed is hookerai radish, and all that will be up here in the little section right there. <clears throat> and I also have four squash that I like to grow. I we're we are a big zucchini eater. Um, that's my favorite favorite vegetable, pretty much. Um, and so I like to grow just a straight American favorite is like the Black Beauty. And I also like to grow a patty pan white scallop squash. Both of those are summer squashes, and both are really fun to to um, put in stir fries or bake or even eat raw. Um, and then I like to grow, last year we grew a, um, I'm looking at my notes, Georgia Candy Roaster. Oh my gosh, it, I think it was probably one of the best summer, or excuse me, winter squash I've ever had. And then the Jumbo Banana Squash. Those are, they're very, very large squash and we grew them great in our area. And we don't, we have a, a long growing season, like 202 days, 200 growing days. But in those growing days, we don't have that hot, hot weather that you really need to have to grow the summer vegetables like winter squash. But they did perfectly fine in our area. Um, that banana squash, I didn't personally grow. I started the seed and I took it up to my uncle and he grew it in his garden. And I kid you not, that thing was probably about this big. So when you see the picture in, um, right up here of that squash, they're not lying. They are a huge squash. Very, very mild in flavor. You could probably use it in a, like a pumpkin pie or squash pie or anything. I just like it with butter, a little bit of salt and pepper just outstanding and wonderful. So I have some 
other ones that I want to share with you that I'm going to grow that are new in 2023. And one of them is a Lucid Gen Tomato. And that is um, kind of pineapple-y, tropical in flavor. It placed number one in the tomato contest that I entered this past September. And so from then on, I really wanted to get the seed and grow it in my garden this year. And Sugar Rush Peach, which is a chili pepper that I haven't grown before. I'm pretty excited to uh, grow that. It's sweet and kind of peachy in color, and it has a little bit of a kick. Pretty excited to grow that. Another one that I'm going to grow is a winter squash called Sweet Meat. It has a grayish skin and a dark uh, orangey yellow flesh. And it's supposed to be really good for long-term storage. So I've had that in the grocery store a few times and it's pretty good. But I've never grown it on my own. And um, let's see what else. Oh, I'm looking for a high productive tomato that I can grow in my little uh, hoop house that I have here. I I really want to get a high producing tomato. So if anybody has any idea of what I could use to do that or grow, I would appreciate all that. Um, and also, I just wanted to throw it out there. This has been my birthday week. I turned 50, the big 5-0 on Tuesday. So I ended up getting a whole bunch of cool stuff with some birthday money that I got. We ended up getting a couple, three blueberries, a elephant ear, a dahlia, and then I got um, cro cro crocus, some new fiscars, and a wisteria. And I ended up getting these new burpee style of... Um, uh, seed starting containers they look pretty heavy duty um, they have little pop outs right here to make it easy to get the um, start I got a 16 by 16 I felt that that was um, the perfect size for me it's the extra large and uh, they have a smaller one which is a 36 cell but I thought it was a little bit too small for my needs I like to let them hang out in the cells a little bit longer to get planted out. So um, I ended up getting this one at Fred Meyer, but you can also get them on Amazon. And I'll put a link down below if you would like to purchase it. I think they're like 11 or $12 and maybe we can um, share uh, what we think about that product. I just want to say thank you for watching this video and if you could give me a thumbs up, subscribe, maybe make a comment uh, down below that really helps out the channel and I just love you all and hope you have a wonderful day and bye until next time.